Uh, welcome to the Washington Football Post Game Show. And once again, I mean, I think we can kind of get used to this. The Washington football team pulls off another win, this time over the San Francisco 49ers. I am Darren Haynes alongside Charlotte McBride. This is great because you, the fans who are watching on our Facebook page, website, Twitter, what other sites that we're on, uh, get a chance to join this conversation in regards to this football team because they are 4 0. Excuse me, they have won four straight games, <laughs> uh, first time in like since 2016. And they're, they are in first place in the NFC East. That means if the season ended today or if they win out, they are in the playoffs. The playoffs. We're talking playoffs. playoffs and Washington football team in the same sentence. It hasn't happened yet, but as Darren just said, they're in first place mm -hmm. in the NFC East after this win, winning four straight. If we look back on, let's say, the third week in the year, maybe the fourth week, Darren, we would have never thought that we'd be right here mid-December, and we're talking Washington football team and playoffs, but we are. After a great solid win, 23-15, beating the 49ers on the road, but both teams were on the road, so take that with you all. I, I just think it's just amazing the fact that the way this team started off the season, we're just like, okay, they got that Eagles win, and then right. all of a sudden they started losing these games, and we're like, okay, here we go. We have another tough season for this Washington football team. And back during those weeks, Ron Rivera was like, you know what, I'm going to have mm -hmm. Alex Smith, actually Kyle Allen start. Right. and move Alex Smith as a second uh, string quarterback and put Dwayne Haskins as a third string quarterback because we want to make a run at this division. And I, I don't know about you, Charlotte, but I was like, Ron, are you, Ron, are you crazy? But <laughs> he definitely thought that. <laughs> but now, but, but now Ron Rivera looks like a, a genius because this team, they only have three more games in this particular season. If they win out, they are in the postseason. He does look like a genius. He's made all the right moves. There's a lot of moves that us members of the media, we have questioned as the season has gone on. We've said, mm, what are you doing there? But he has made all the right calculated moves. Think about this team. They've had three starting quarterbacks in this season, and they're in first place in their division. What other teams in the National Football League go through three starting quarterbacks in a season, kind of rotating them in and out, and they're still holding on to first place, looking at a, a playoff berth? What, what makes this, this season so much better, Charlotte, in addition to what you're saying, because what you just said was some great stuff. You add, about, you add all those three quarterbacks, right? Mm -hmm. Then you add the fact that Alex Smith, one of those quarterbacks, came back from a life-threatening yeah. injury. Then you look at the name change, everything the Washington football team had to go through mm -hmm. uh, this particular offseason. Changing, changing the culture, getting rid yeah. of a president, bringing in a new president. Getting rid of players that was literally like the foundation of your franchise mm -hmm. and a guy like Adrian Peterson. And now this team, let's just say, I mean, we can start the countdown. They're three wins away from That's right. making the postseason. And they did this in this, they won this particular game without scoring an offensive touchdown. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. They, cra I, I'm looking they, at the stats here. And you're talking about offense. Yeah, they, they the Niners beat them in every single offensive category here. The Niners in total plays, total yards of offense, passing, rushing, first downs. The Niners offense was beating them on the field, but there's that one place that the Niners were not beating them, and that's on defense. And Washington's defense stepped up big today. We're going to get to they, that in a little bit. Uh, this is Washington's first win without scoring an offensive touchdown on the road since 1992 when they beat the Minnesota Vikings, I believe it was in October and November, one of the two, don't quote me on that, in Minnesota. That's a, that's a, lo that's we're a long time. We're talking about so many firsts, right? The last few weeks with all these wins that they have been able to accomplish, we're talking about the, you know, the first time they went at Heinz Field. Now the first time yeah. that they have won a game on the road without an offensive touchdown. The Washington football team is doing things that we have not seen a Washington football team do in years, in and decades. The, and the only reason why is because Washington hasn't been able, been able to accomplish a lot in the last decade or so. Mm -hmm. uh, we will say this, you the fans, remember, comment on our Facebook page because we're going to give you a shout out. We're going to read your comments on how excited you are about this football team. Now it's basically the countdown, three wins and they are in. Do you feel like this team can, can, can you know, make things happen in the postseason? Because this is a totally different football team. A lot of people didn't expect Washington to be here. And mm -hmm. here's what the players had to say because they knew they were this good. Uh, you know, guys is happy, man. You know, we, we expected to be here um a long time ago. You know, we, we had a tough, you know, coming out in the season at the beginning of the year. Uh, it was tough. You know, we, we lost a couple of games. We felt like we should have won. We can't get it back now. Um, But to control your destiny, you know, you know we're leading the way right now. You know, that, that feels great. Um, This team has been fighting hard. You know, we believe, you know, when nobody else believes, when people talk bad about us, you know, we always had each other's back. You know, and we're showing that right now. I mean, it's – um. 
it just made me happy because I know what we've been through, what we've been going through at the beginning of the season to see it all like, unfolding, us just keep working hard and it's coming together. And I uh, feel like everybody around us knows it's coming together. So we just want to keep fighting for each other, seeing all the hard work that we've been putting in uh, just, just to know it's not going in vain. Um, like I know, we, you know, when you lose and everybody can get down, but um, we just try to keep going at it every week and it's, it's turning turning out good for us. We're relevant. We're in the conversation. People are talking about us and we have to maintain uh, and be humble. We have, to, we, we have to understand that, you know, like I told them about last week's victory and, and now this week's victory, you know, this thing will carry us to the game, but it won't, it won't mean anything once we play the game. So we've just got to enjoy it and then get ourselves prepared for the next game that we play. And we got a Seattle team coming. That's a good football team. All right, so here's a look at what the NFC East standings currently look at. And like we told you, the Washington football team is in first place. They had, uh, they were tied with the New York Giants, but the Giants, remember, they beat Washington twice this season. So they, they own the tiebreaker. But it doesn't matter if Washington can win out and win this particular division. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, even though it says update, uh, the update was the fact that they, uh, they beat the New Orleans Saints, a very quality football team. Uh, but right now, the, the, the Washington football team is in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. Like I told you before, three wins and they are in. They control their game. own destiny. How often has that happened in recent years where the Washington football team controls its own <laughs> destiny? <laughs> yeah, we're talking way back, way yeah. back when. <laughs> Wait, what, five years, six years, something yeah. like that? Um, it's, it's, it's been a minute. And, and one thing, when you want to win this NFC East division, let's look at it like a title, like a championship. Mm -hmm. and, and comment on our Facebook page, you guys, because a team that can win a championship you can't win a championship without what, Charla? Defense. That is right. And Washington, their defense, I mean, especially in the second half, Charla, they, wow. they, they've held it down. You know, I'm looking at some of the stats, and the stats speak volumes, but from what we just saw on the field, this complete team effort, John Bostic, again, we talked about him last week. He had some huge plays in this one. Ten total tackles there, four solo tackles. I mean, but we got to talk about two guys that – really just break out games. Of course, Cam Curl with that pick six and then, well, our guy Chase Young just all over the place. Yeah, we'll, then, get to, we'll get to him in a little bit. We because we also saw great games from Deron Payne, Montez Sweat. I mean, I could just go down the entire defense and every single person made at least one huge play in this game. They made it real tough for the 49ers to do anything. For, for, for those who don't know at home, you know, Charlotte and I were watching this game. We cover this team, so we know all the players. But it's still sort of surreal when they mention all the first round draft picks that are on the defensive line. Yeah. I thought it was too good to be true. I was like, yeah. I was like, no, Montez Sweat, he went second round. No, he's a first rounder. Deron Payne, he's a first rounder. Yeah. Chase, Chase Young, Young, he's a first rounder. Ryan Kerrigan, he's a first first rounder. That's uh, right. Uh, uh, who am I thinking about? Uh, not Deron Payne. Uh, Is John Bostic a first rounder? No, John Bostic was not. Mm. However, though, there's just a whole bunch of first yeah. rounders there in, in the in the first round. Um, in the in the defensive line. And one thing about this team, when it comes down to the second half, I totally lost my train of thought. In that. <laughs> uh, we're human and this is live TV. Uh, but one thing about this team, when it comes down to the second half, since week five, y'all, they've only allowed two touchdowns in the second half. Just two since week five. Mm -hmm. What is this, week 14? Yeah, week 14. We see them start slow every week, right? We've, we've seen that almost every single week. We get frustrated. They're off to a slow start on offense, especially not really doing things early on. And we're always going, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. But then the second half, I don't know. Is it, the, is it that halftime I, locker room talk? I got, I, I, pick me. Pick me. I know the answer. <laughs> okay, yeah. Because over the previous years, when you, when you had Jay Gruden as the head coach, this team did not make adjustments, and they literally they had a lead. And next thing you know, they're MIA. They stayed in the locker room. One thing about this Washington football team, which we can mm -hmm. really tell this time around, yes, they need to get off to a better start. However, the best thing about the coaching staff is they're able to make those adjustments That's and right. realize what's not working or things they need to do so they can take advantage of this game. And we see that every single time they come out in the second half because it's literally like two different teams. Mm -hmm. I'd, rather have, I'd rather have a team that – finishes strong than a team that starts off strong and then literally like loses their yeah. lead at the end of the game. It's not how you start, game. it's how you finish. And this team has been finishing strong and again, four straight wins. Take a listen to what the defense had to say after this one. This game today. It was pretty exciting. You know, they did a lot of good things. They really stepped up and helped out. You know, they, they did some really good things. Uh, they both their next one they had to. 
I know there's some issues that Jack's not happy with, but you know, Jack's expecting an awful lot from those guys as we all are. And, uh, and those guys rose to the occasion. We've been talking about playoffs, playoffs and Washington football team in the same sentence. So here you go. Here's a look at the playoff odds. They have a 74% chance to go to the playoffs right now. We're mid-December. They hold the sole possession lead of this division. And yes, they have a 74% chance to make the playoffs. And then check this out, a 73% chance to win this division. I, everybody. This just is look, happening. Matter of fact, we should just leave this graphic up for the entire dang on show. Mm -hmm. Because if, if when you look at this 74% chance, you guys should get excited. All these Washington football fans, I've been here long enough to know how frustrated you guys are every single season. Uh, and listen, this is the best thing that has happened to this football team since R RG3 was here. Or maybe the year that, that Kirk yeah. Cousins brought the team uh, 2012 to the playoffs. 2012 was probably the last so, time we saw. So we should really be excited about this particular moment. And, and before this, this, this day even started, mm -hmm. the Washington football team, they had like only like a 43% chance of making the playoffs. The New York <laughs> Giants actually had a better chance of making the playoffs. Then all of a sudden the Giants lost. And next thing you know, the Washington football team had like a 55% chance, chance of making the playoffs. Now they get this win and it's 74%. I remember in my sports cast last week, I mm -hmm. was like, if they can get this win over the San Francisco 49ers, it will bounce from, I think it was like 40 something percent yeah. to 74%. And I thought that was an error. And you predicted a win just because you didn't want to dance again, but you predicted <laughs> you know, the win. Good job. <laughs> I, listen, I'm not going to vote against, I'm not going to go against the Washington football team right now. I mean, they're one I, of the hottest teams in the NFL right now. They're, they're, they won four straight. If you look at some of the other teams that have won a yeah. lot of games, uh, I'm, I'm, Four I'm straight is fact, impressive, I'm gonna, especially I'm look this that late up. in the season. Longest winning, streak, longest winning streaks as of right now, the active ones. I'm going to look that up to see who that is. Comment on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, one guy who's really made this team super, super special is a first-round draft pick, a guy who's, who's from this area in Maryland, uh, went to DeMatha High School, played ball at Ohio State. Uh, we took him second overall in this year's NFL draft, and his name is Chase Young. And, Chase and, Young. And Chase Young... What a talent he is. What a wow. man child. What a beast he is. And the thing about Chase Young, what he did today, he became the first player in Washington football history to record a fumble return for a touchdown, mm -hmm. a forced fumble, and a sack in a single game. Listen, the Washington football franchise has been around forever. And Chase Young is the first player to ever do that. Only nine players in NFL history have done it, and Chase Young is one of those nine players. And he's not Mike just dropped. the first player to do this. Guys, as we just said, he was drafted in this year's NFL draft. He's a rookie. He's doing these things as a rookie. And what we saw him do on the field today, that sack, uh, can we talk about that sack? He just, wow, I was speechless after that Listen, sack. I, if, if I'm a quarterback and I'm, and I'm dropping back and mm -hmm. I see Chase Young coming, I'm even either gonna duck low <laughs> And if I don't duck low, something's going to come out down below. And, and, and it's, it's going to be dirty. I'm going to need some extra Tide with bleach to get that bad boy out. I'm not messing with, Ch with Chase Young. No. That is a bad man. And you know what his teammates love about him, too? They talked about this after the game, that he's a bad man on the football field. But when he goes on the sidelines, he, he's pumping them up that entire time. He's mm -hmm. saying stuff to them. We see him. We see him jumping up and down. We see him getting his teammates pumped up. He's a very, very vocal leader. Emotional he is guy, into yep. this game, and they love that. They love to hear what he has to say on the field, off the field. He's leading by example, obviously, on the field. But off the field, he's still that vocal leader that team needs. And um, we had some fun with him after the game. Um, as many of you may or may not know, Chase Young is very close to his mother. His mm -hmm. mother does not miss a game. And his mother is probably his, bad, his biggest critic. No, I would, she I would is. Say. Yeah. No, she is. So she's all over him. When he does bad, she's all over him. But when he does good, well, she's right there with him. Take a look at what happened post-game. No, nah, she's she definitely happy, though. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking to her right now. Um... I I'm, I'm lost for words. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I was out there playing ball, man, and, 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 and uh, you know, good things happened for me today. What would you, what'd you think of the touchdown today? <laughs> she said, they said, what did you think of the touchdown tonight? Oh, my gosh. I, I'm just so worn out. It, it was just outstanding. I couldn't even believe it. I was in shock. Hey, and I said he knows how to pick that ball up and that phone on it, and he got it and kept trucking. <laughs> um, he's fired up. He really is. And, and quite honestly, I haven't had a chance to talk to him. 
Um, it, it's just, it's just kind of one of those things. I told you guys, that, you know, he's a, he's one of the young guys that brings a lot of energy, and um, he, he he's I mean it's an amazing thing because he's in, he's infectious with his teammates, and I think that's the kind of thing that we need from these young guys, is that it, it really carries a lot of energy in, into the into the into the group, and that's exciting. And he's been he's been great. Um, just real happy for him because again, you know, he he went through a lot of things in terms of. Um, you know, just trying to get opportunities. He's been doubled a lot. He's been tripled in the past, but he just stayed patient, kept doing his job, and, and came up big for us today. Oh, he uh, he's a dog, and uh, our whole defensive line are just straight dogs. So I feel like he, he, him um, pumping up the whole D line. I mean, not the D line, but the team really, because he uh, go up and down the sideline doing it. I feel like that that helps us. Um, it helps keep guys in in the game. So. All right. All right. So we were telling you about Chase Young and, and what he accomplished, but you can see right there, he's the first to record a fumble return for a touchdown, uh, first uh, to force a fumble and record a sack in a single game in franchise history. I mean, just looking at that picture of just Chase Young right there, forget about the stats. I mean, that's why I talk about it. He's a I, I would hate to be a quarterback, <laughs> anybody, any offensive guy dealing with that Having man him right come there. At you. And especially when the Niners, they lost – Trent Williams, what it, their second possession of the game. So he was no longer on the line helping out to block for their quarterback. And then you had uh, Chase Young go right in there, take advantage. 99 and, uh, problems, and Chase Young is <laughs> just – He's all 99 problems. There were a few injuries in this game. Um, I mentioned Trent Williams obviously going out for the Niners, but Alex Smith, mm -hmm. uh, the Washington football team lost Alex Smith. After the half, he no longer played in this game. Dwayne Haskins came in for him, but no need to worry. This, he was taken out of the game out of an abundance of a caution of caution. Those are the exact words from Ron Rivera. He was dealing with a calf strain, so they were trying to work it out. We saw him on the sideline for a little bit. They're trying to massage it. They're trying to work it out a little bit, see if maybe he could go back in. But no, they decided out of an abundance of caution to leave Dwayne Haskins in the game the second half. And it worked. It, it, it did work. They got still, the win. Still, they, they, you know, Dwayne Haskins had that one drive where it set them up for, for a, field a field goal. goal. Um, we didn't see that much out of Dwayne Haskins, or should I say, we didn't see much more out of Dwayne Haskins than what Alex Smith actually put into the ball game as well. They, they right. both couldn't get into Not the end zone. Not a lot of offense. Um, also, it's a different time period in the game where you do want to run the ball some more to run the clock out while you had the lead. That was uh, Washington had the lead in that particular game. Um, now, I don't want to say there's quarterback drama, but when I was listening to the post-game conference, when you hear all those questions to Ron Rivera uh, and to Dwayne Haskins, you talk about, well, the growth. What kind of growth did you see? Were you pleased with how Dwayne Haskins played? All this type of stuff just now makes you just wonder, okay, if Alex Smith is not ready to go with this particular calf injury to take on the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday, uh, is Dwayne Haskins going to be ready? Because we have not heard from Dwayne Haskins or we have not seen Dwayne Haskins play in weeks. Right. And, and one person who really enjoyed the opportunity and actually got emotional about just getting back on the field because of going literally from the starting quarterback to the, the third, third string. string quarterback running scout yeah. team was Dwayne Haskins. Here he is after the game getting emotional. I would just say the biggest role that I've had uh, is just been as a person. Uh, it's probably the biggest amount of adversity that I've faced since coming into this world. And I lean on a lot of people, a lot of mentors, family, close ones. I prayed and I prayed again. And um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just glad that I'm able to be here right now and tell you guys that I'm thankful. I'm definitely a Dwayne Haskins supporter. Um, but competitive excellence, some Coach Meyer had told us in college, uh, competitive excellence means when your number is called, you got to be ready. And I feel like today his number was called and, 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 and he, uh, he performed. And uh, I'm proud of him. I told him after the game, I'm proud of him. And I said um, the same thing I say, just keep going, man. Keep going. So good oh. stuff out of, out, of, out, of, out of Haskins getting back on the field. And then, of course, Chase Young, who was from Maryland, just like mm -hmm. Dwayne Haskins is, both played out of Ohio State, having his back uh, in that particular situation. Um, remember, comment on our Facebook page. We're going to read your comments yes. in just a little bit. Sharla, what's next, girl? Well, um, as I mentioned earlier, Trent Williams, of course, he went out of the game, just the second possession of the game for the Niners with an injury. But uh, it was a little bit of a familiarity for him, of course, spending a decade with the Washington football team. And he wasn't the only one. Jordan Reed also now playing for the Niners. And he also played for the Washington football team. And then, of course, there's Kyle Shanahan. So a lot of familiarity with these 
these guys. And, you know, Trent Williams um, a few days ago spoke to the media about what it would be like to play against his former team. He said there's no bad blood for him personally. Of course, he was excited to see his former teammates. I mean, you're on a you're playing with a franchise for a decade and of course you're going to develop friendships and but it's got to be weird him lining up against Ryan Kerrigan, right? <laughs> it, 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 it did look really weird. I actually enjoyed that moment at a particular time. But I will say this, Charla. Um, I spoke to, to Trent Williams when he decided to go to the 49ers. I spoke mm -hmm. to Trent Williams over the summertime. I spoke to Trent Williams. I spoke to Trent many, many, many times before. I, I got to hand it to Trent for at least playing it cool mm -hmm. and really not letting the emotions on how he felt when he was with this particular organization. But let's just be totally real. Yeah. The Washington football team, not the current administration that's there now because it's a new president mm -hmm. with, with the team, a new head coach, totally it was new. totally different, really mishandled the Trent Williams situation. And it, this is nothing that I'm making up. This is what Trent was telling me. Um, and he doesn't want to make have any bulletin, bulletin board material. Trent Williams, he's been in the league long enough. He's, he's smarter than that. Mm -hmm. um, but trust me, deep down inside, Trent Williams wanted to get this win. He wanted to see his former players, of course. A lot of those guys are actually gone. But a guy like Ryan Kerrigan, you know, those guys have played along each other for, for yeah. years. Um, and then you look at Alex Smith, and it's kind of sad because Alex Smith, like you mentioned, Charlie, he didn't get a chance to play the entire game. And, and Alex Smith was looking for his he first really win was. over his former team. And I guess since he played majority of the first half, I guess we can count that as a win over his former team. I think so. They were leading at the half. So guess, yeah. he went into the locker room. I mean, obviously it wasn't the best game statistically that he's had. Uh, no mistakes, really. Just they weren't getting a lot done on offense, as we said. It was really uh, the story of the defense in this one. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Al Alex, we'll Smith, Alex Smith is a guy who was drafted first overall back in 05 mm -hmm. by, by San Francisco. And, and I think it was the 2011-2012 the season. He was benched for Colin Kaepernick. And that team went on to make it to the Super Bowl, right. ended up losing. And then they traded Alex Smith to Kansas City, uh, yeah. where he did very well there. The thing about Alex Smith, 49ers, Kansas City Chiefs, and a Washington football team, he has a winning record with all those three ball clubs. Um, Not bad. Hall, Hall of Famer, you think? Mm, mm, I don't let, know. We'll let, I have to see a you little more about below. Alex Comment on our Facebook page if, if, okay, if you think yeah, Alex Smith is, is a Hall of Famer. Um, all right, so as we continue to move on, one big play in this particular game, uh, we can show this picture right there. Who, who, who is this particular individual? <laughs> <laughs> Who, this is the photo of the day, y'all. Cam and Curl, look Cam at Curl. that. He did not break his neck. This is not a photo of an energy, y'all. An uh, in injury. <laughs> um, this is, yeah, the play of the day right there. Uh, the, the pick six by Cameron <laughs> Curl. Uh, here's Cameron Curl uh, talking about making that big play for Washington. I was just on my landmark uh, for the play we had called. And they, they had the fullback in the flat. And the quarterback was back there patting the ball. And I really just knew he was going to throw it to the flat. You know, he was patting it too long, and he threw it to me. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate him for that. I seen green grass. I had to go. All right, so now it's what? The time for the fun part of the, the Oh, the yeah. Game? We like what? to see some of your comments. We have a lot of comments here. We want you to keep commenting on our Facebook page as we are live here. And um, I'm looking at a lot of these. Let's see. I, I, I have one that's 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 right here. I, okay. So Shelby Angus says, uh, hopefully Alex Alex can come back because Dwayne Haskins uh, isn't it. Okay. That's that's wow. strong. I'm sure you're not the only person that that feels that way. And, and if, if I if oh, do you, you want? Yeah, I'm seeing a few people I, that just, are not on the Haskins uh, bandwagon at all. I, but I can, Alex Smith. I, I can I can yeah. see I can see I can see why. Dwayne Haskins only played a he second half. He had a half. chance to prove himself, right? We, we said when we, he went in in the second half, we said, all right, let's see what he does. Let's see what happens in the second half. I, I, you know me. I root for Dwayne Haskins all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but if Alex Smith is healthy, you got to put Alex Smith back in so. there because he's a huge reason why this ball, uh, ball club has turned things around and they're even in the playoff picture. Let's just, let's just keep it real. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I agree. You, like, yeah, you got to go back to Alex Smith if he's ready to go. Uh, but if he's not ready to go, let's hope that – Dwayne Haskins taking that number two role and learning from Alex Smith that he can come into this ball game and play better. I like this. Danelle Johnson, in all caps, says. Okay. That means that she's yelling. That no-name team is going to the Super Bowl, y'all. Oh. <laughs> okay. They might not have a name, but this guy says they're going to the Super Bowl. Okay. I uh, mean, high hopes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look up but these But, hey, these odds it's 2020. Look. Anything can happen, right? 
Any, anything could happen to this Washington football team. The only thing is, is like, just, let's just say they lose one game and they win the other two. What will they have? Uh, will they have a losing record? They would be five. No, they are six and seven six and right seven, now. So they'll be eight. Oh, they'll be eight and eight. So it wouldn't yeah. be a losing record. Because I remember you were mentioning before a few weeks ago, Ron Rivera, you know, he, he's, he took a team with a losing record uh, to the playoffs before. And I believe it was the year after that. They went, they, to went the to the they went to the Super Bowl. They were seven and nine with the Carolina Panthers, and they were able to go to the playoffs. And then the very next year, they went 15 and one. 15 and nine. I mean, 15 and one from a seven and nine record. Not saying it's going to happen, but I did mention this a few weeks ago. So, for who was who was the person who who was wondering that? Because I'm about, I'm about to give you Donnell Johnson. So, Don Donnell. 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 So Donnell, here here are your here's your Super Bowl odds because we already okay. gave you the odds of them possibly getting into the playoffs, their chances, and winning their division. So the Washington Football Team, <clears throat> ooh, that's not good. They have a one percent <laughs> chance. At winning the Super Bowl. This is according to 538.com. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> there's a small, very itsy bitsy, teeny weeny, one hey. percent chance that this, that this Washington football team can win the Super Bowl. But let me say you this. Know what? Let me. But let me say this. In the last four <laughs> weeks, Charla, the NFC East, which people used to call the NFC least, has mm -hmm. been one of the most dominant football clubs. If you combine all their wins together, they had more wins yeah. coming into this week. Than Crazy. all the other uh, divisions when you combine their particular respective divisions. I mean, if you had told me in 2020 that I'd be walking around wearing a mask and trying to find a, a vaccine, I would have told you what back in 19, uh, 2019. <laughs> in 2019, did you ever think there would be a segment where we kind of judge what people are wearing called yes, suited or booted? Because this is my favorite segment. It's fashion <laughs> football. Uh, so one. so the, the Washington football team, they didn't dress to impress. So we're looking at other ways that we can fit the suited or booted mm -hmm. in. And of course, the man of the hour, Chase Young. Uh, what do you think of the crop top look? Cause I'm sure that was a brand new t-shirt that is no longer looking like it's new. It, it fits his form body, I don't know. I, I mean, the dude is ripped. The dude looks like he's gonna take that field and just kill someone. And well, we've seen him do that several times. And yeah, it's the intimidation factor. He's warming up on the sideline. He's trying to play it cool, but. All right. so. I, so, Charles, if, it's the intimidation. Factor. So suppose suppose I had a body like Chase Young, which <clears throat> I kind of do, uh, ah. and I walked outside. <laughs> I no, I'm just, definitely don't. If I walked outside with a crop top, people would be like, you look like a fool. Nope. He walks outside like that. They're like, oh, he plays nah, football for the Washington walked, football if, team. If Chase Young walked on the street with a crop top, people would laugh at him. If they did not know he was Chase Young, uh -uh. If, he, if Ladies, he was just a random dude no. with a crop top in the street, People will be looking at him crazy. They'd be like, that guy works out. I'd like to know what he does. Yes. Our director, Melissa, just said she would like to know what he does for fitness. I'm with you, Melissa. He trains with me, you know. Uh, of you course, know they I, train together. Wait, I, do we have another, our, do we have another body, suited or booted? Listen, don't make me take my suit jacket off. We look the We're same. We're going to make you. We look the same underneath. <laughs> yeah, sort of. All right. Uh, here's our next one. Deron Payne. Uh, like I told you, they couldn't wear suits, so he's going with the... So, the, 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 the... he's going with a vest, a tactical vest. Is that a vest over sweats? I have a lot of questions. I don't know. You can keep... Someone a said, uh, or director said it looks yeah, like a Yeah, maybe. Snowsuit. If it has the pants attached. But I'm I... seeing, like, the top looks like, you know, something that would go over, like, a military... I look issued. at it. I look at it as in a way where you can hide your gummy bears in the top left corner. You can hide your Sour Patch Kids on the bottom right, and then your Tic Tacs and your gum on the bottom left. I think this is a way that you can really carry all the snacks, all those essential. All the snacks. All those, if you guys don't know, Darren's essential. obsessed with candy. He just well, listed all candies. That's you, all. He Deron needs. Payne weighs <laughs> three hundred and like fifty something pounds. You think he's not obsessed with candy? He needs places to put the candy and the snacks. So you're gonna you're gonna suit this up. You're not gonna boot it. Because uh, I'm going to boot it. I don't really know what's going little, on. There's not a lot of ingenuity rhythm here. there. Is there Figuring a, out a way to, like, to, to bring the snacks on the plane? I, I'm, I'm going to say suit it. I'm booting Chase Young, but I'm, I'm going to say suit it. I'm suiting Chase this. Young. You're booting Chase Young? No, I'm suiting it. Oh, you're suiting that? Comment below. Would you, if I wore the crop top, would you, would you, oh would, you suit, would you suit me? I can't wait to see this. You know, we got, you're lucky it's wintertime. You're lucky Snowmageddon's coming uh, over the uh, this week, because if it was warm outside, Chester, who's our, our you know, who does all the weather, he's right here. If, if Chester said it was 80 something degrees tomorrow, I'll break out the crop top. But I don't want to break the Internet. 
Okay. Uh, we're and now speaking of speaking of Snowmageddon, uh, how about the all white uniforms that they wore for now a second straight uh, game? They're with two, two big wins with those white uniforms. Two and zero oh in the in the Snowmageddon look. I'm calling. It I right think now. they have to wear those the rest of the season. And you know, Ron even Rivera even is, for a home game. Ron Rivera has talked to us about little things like little superstitions, little things. How very superstitious. I think he I was mentioning him. about not staying in the same hotel on the road if they go they there did again. They not stay in and the then, same hotel. Yep. And then they, they lose and then they have to change hotels. He's very superstitious with things like that. So he's taken notice. We've taken notice. Their two biggest wins of the season, I will say, against the Steelers and now the Niners, and we're in December football. They're wearing those unis. I think you got to keep the unis. Come I on. Say, I, say, I say suit it because I'm one of the most superstitious people out there. Uh, if you win in the all-white, keep the all-whites yeah. on. The problem is they're going to be playing a home game against Seattle, so I don't know if they can necessarily do that. No, um, I know. But, but, you know, I love what, like, the Washington Nationals did where they're rocking the navy blue during the playoffs. They didn't lose in them, so they kept wearing them. I say if you can bend some NFL rules and rock yes. the all white throughout the rest of the season. If there's a way rock, they can do it. Rock, yes. Rock the all white. I am I am down for it. If it, it's if it's not broke, don't fix it. Keep wearing the all white. I say suit it. I definitely say suit it. I hope they can bend a few rules and I hope we get to see that next week because that is going to be a huge game. They have Seattle coming to town next week. Seattle, obviously one of the best teams in the NFC. Seattle playing great football. Obviously, they had that kind of I'm going to say a blip where they lost to the Giants. <laughs> but uh, it's, Seattle's a great team, and they're coming into town. Russell Wilson's nothing to mess with. So yep. we'll see how Chase Young handles Russell Wilson. We'll give our predictions on that in just a little bit. Remember, remember comment on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We're about to read your comments right now. And while we read your comments, because we're going to give you a shout-out, so comment below. Uh, here's Tim Settle, uh, part of the defensive line, a local guy, actually. Uh, Rapid Nine with uh, Mr. Settle. Tim Settle. If you could switch bodies with one player from your team just to live their life for one day, who would you switch with? Terry McLaren. This so I can see how fast I am. That's what I call him, McLaren. I'm trying to ride him McLaren. I ran a 5-4 at the combine, so you know my wheels is a little, I got SUV wheels. Who would you rather not give the keys to your car to? Anybody from the Washington football roster? I'm not giving my keys to Chase because I think he don't know how to drive. Chase Young said the same thing. Who would you rather not give the keys to your car to anybody on this team? Probably Tim Settle. Tim might not be focused the whole time driving. I'm pretty sure I know how to drive a little better than Chase. And I'm pretty sure my I, I got way less points on my record than Chase. Who do people say you look like? This is my third year on this team. I walk out the uh, parking lot of every game and they call me pain every time. And I know they seen pain before I came. My name's been pain for the past three years. Tim, you're stranded on an island, but you can only wear one of these two items of clothing, a Cowboys jersey or a Giants jersey. I, I'll wear a New York Giants jersey. I, I'm not wearing no star. Though. I'm from this area. See, I'm a Washington football player. I've always been a Washington football fan, and I don't like the Cowboys. All right, I want to read uh, a few more comments that we're seeing here. This is from Dominic Faison. I hope I'm saying that right. He says, Panthers fan here, former Washington football team fan, but good luck to Ron Rivera and the Washington football team. Our season is cooked. He's talking about the Panthers, of course. He's going to get a vengeance on us in a few weeks because we are playing terrible. We will be playing for a draft pick, but <laughs> I think I agree with everything he says. So, uh, I'm trying to yeah, see I think they're going to beat the Panthers. In a few weeks. They, listen, they better beat the Panthers. The Panthers are four and nine right now. I'm like, yeah. they, they, they better beat the Panthers. Um, do you have another comment before we Let's give our see. prediction? Um, I'm looking. I'm looking. So while she's looking, we're mentioning about like winning streaks. Yeah. And some it, of the hottest teams. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the, the longest winning streaks, so the Browns have won four straight. And. Again, it's is it 2020? Yes, it is 2020. I never thought I'd hear so, him say that sentence. So the, the Browns. So have the won so the Browns <laughs> and the Washington football team have won four straight. Wow. There's only one streak that's longer than that, and it's the defending Super Bowl champion, the Kansas City Chiefs. So no so, surprise there. So right. the Washington football team is tied for second as the hottest team in the NFL right now. Who would have thought that? Who would have thought that? At week four, thought. week five. Let we certainly be. didn't think that. Okay, I like this. Jasmine Hudson, we're looking good right now. They are hungry for the opportunity, Washington all the way. Jasmine, I'm with you. All right. They certainly are playing hungry. They are getting after it. They are playing great football. We love to see it every week. We're talking about a win. Let's keep it going. 
All right, so let's give our prediction for next week. They're taking on the Seattle Seahawks. It's here, oh. FedEx Field. I know no fans can come, uh, but there will be a football game. Who, who, who are you taking, the Washington football this team so or the Seattle Seahawks, who uh, they are currently tied for first place in the NFC West with the L.A. Rams? Which that division's been pretty Which good. the L.A. Rams beat the Washington football team. Mm -hmm. Come on, Charlotte. Do we need to play music? Do I, do, so is this like is tough. Okay, music? so this is tough because. Okay. All right, tell me. Okay. As you know, I okay. have always picked the Washington football team. The last five weeks, I've okay. picked the Washington football team. I really want to pick the Washington football team. I have just also watched how the Seahawks have been playing this season, and I know it must have crushed Seattle to lose that one to the Giants. I don't know if I see Seattle losing to another NFC East division team. But I want to pick Washington. I like the momentum that they're on. I like what they're doing. Tell me more. Tell me how you feel. <laughs> okay, so just to stick with tradition, because every time I pick them, they've won. I, I will pick Washington football team, but I'm going to say it's going to overtime. Okay, all right. I'm saying 27-24 in overtime. All right, re, 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 re rack the music. Let me see if I can get this emotional thing like you did, which I'm not. I just don't know. I feel the Washington football team will lose against the mm -hmm. Seattle Seahawks. I'm calling it right now. I wish the Washington football team does win. However, I do think if you look at their entire schedule, they can beat Carolina. They can beat Philly. Yes. I did believe they can beat the 49ers. That one team that I felt like they probably will lose to, and I'm okay with them losing to this particular mm -hmm. team, that's the Seattle Seahawks. I'm saying it right now. If they beat the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, wait. I, I'm i smelling another bet, another Darren bet. They're my favorites. If Darren, they beat what? the Seattle Seahawks. I will walk, I will, I will. Chester I will, Lampkin. I will, I will wear a crop top under my suit. And maybe I'll take my jacket off and you guys can understand that I look like Chase Young under my suit. Um. Let's wrap this show up because because we our ratings may be like sky high because I'm telling you, I look like Chase Young underneath this suit. Washington beat Seattle. <laughs> I'm rocking a crop top. OK, um, there's not a whole lot to say after that. So we're just going to hope, I guess, now that we're going to hope and pray Seattle that wins. I don't have to wear a dang old crop top. <laughs>